worship God in truth and in spirit. Worship God in truth and in spirit. That is our topic for this morning. We are going to take our reading from two books. The first one, John 4, 23. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in, in the spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. Again, let's go to Matthew 15, 8. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the reading of your word, the sword of the spirit. Speak to us, build us. Father God, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Worship God in truth and in spirit. When people are worshiping God, in truth and in spirit, situations do not remain the same. There is a change that takes place in, in the individual's life, in families, church, or in any place where the worshiper is worshiping from. Where God is worshipped in truth and in spirit, with all our hearts and soul, God's presence will come and dwell in that place. There is power in worship. Worship attracts the presence of God in individuals or in any place of worship where he is worshipped in truth and in spirit. Where we read, we are told that God is seeking for worshippers who will worship him in truth and in spirit. The Father is not pleased when we worship him with our mouth while the heart is far away. When Jesus addressed this in the second scripture that we read, he was addressing teachers of the law and the Pharisees, telling them about the worshipping of God with the mouth when the heart is far. He was simply quoting the prophets. Prophet Isaiah 29.13. That is where he was quoting from. Children of God, God cannot be mocked. He is able to see if there is a correlation between what the mouth is saying and the heart. He can see it very well. Because the mouth can say something while the heart is saying something or while the heart is far away thinking of other things. There are certain things that we do not understand as believers. We can try to reason, but we are not getting it. There are certain situations in our lives which are not the will of God for us, but they are not changing, even as we are praying. The situation is not the will of God for us. But even if we are praying, even when we are worshipping God, the, 
the situation is not moving. It is not going anywhere. What is the reason? It is because of the kind of worship that we give to God. Though it is not everyone. God cannot be worshipped by an individual whose heart is far away. Although the mouth will be singing along with other children of God. And that person receives what he is praying for. It does not happen. God cannot be worshipped by an individual whose heart is far away. Although he is here amongst other believers, worshipping with the mouth, the answer will not come. God cannot be worshipped by a group of people who are not in unity and they see a change in what they are praying for. It does not happen. As we worship together like this, our hearts and souls must be here. And we must be united in what we are doing. We will see the power of God flowing. There is power in worship. But the power of God cannot be seen because of the kind of worship we Christians give to God. When we worship God with all our hearts, and souls, his presence flows. I mean his presence and his power descend. And miracles will start to take place long before the laying of hands. When true worship is taking place in the house of God, you will see by testimonies even before the laying of hands. The believer will wonder how come I've received my miracle when the team has not yet started to lay hands. The power of God does not wait for the team, the laying of hands by the team. The power of God can flow at any time as long as there is true worship. Worshiping in truth and in spirit. There is no sickness that is above the power of God. There is no such. There is no challenge which is above the power of God. There is no situation which is above the power of God. Everything bows at the mention of the name of Jesus. Amen. But how come we are not receiving? We are worshipping in his house. We also worship as individuals in our private place. But there are situations which are not the will of God, which are resisting, no matter how much we worship. Jesus said, what makes the power of God not to be seen amongst people is people themselves. That is what he said. Meaning, we do not do what we do with all our hearts. He went further to say, Christians are running in all directions looking for miracles when our hearts are not in God. When our worship is not in God. He said he can see us running all over. Looking for miracles. But our hearts are not there. We are moving from place to place. 
looking for a miracle. Sifuni imanga. The miracle cannot be received. Because the kind of worship that God desires from the one who wants a miracle is not being given to him. Christ said the power of God cannot be present in a place where there is no worshipping of God with our hearts and souls in spirit and in truth. He said we will speak with our mouth but we will not witness the power of God in what we want because God will not be there it may sound discouraging but it is the truth and it is coming to help us. One may wonder what does he mean by my heart is not here but my mouth is singing along with the others. Let me give a simple illustration. I believe it is known by everyone or at least some of us. When we come to Christ the first time we do not know how to worship. Mostly because we have not yet read the Bible. When we worship we declare the wonders of God. Those that we read from the Bible and those that we are seeing in our lives. But as a new believer, I have not yet come to know the, the wonders of God. Therefore, I will not know even what to say. I have not heard testimonies of what God is doing. I may lack words to worship him. But as time is going by, I will read the word of God. Then I will know how to worship him. Then I have overcome that area. Then I can worship him. There will still be another problem. I do not have time. I can work on that one as well and overcome it and allocate a specific time for myself to worship God and I discipline myself and I stick to it. There can also be another problem. I get tired. I overcome that one by saying, let me force myself and stand and walk around as I'm worshipping. I am pacing up and down to avoid sleeping because if I do it sitting down, I will doze off and sleep. Therefore, I pace up and down. Then I overcome that one. Now I'm ready. I start. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I worship you. You are the God of heaven and earth. You created heaven and earth. You are my provider. I thank you for the work that you gave me. By the way, there is that unfinished job that I left on Friday. I must get to the office very early tomorrow. Where did I place my keys? In my car? on the dressing table what was I saying yes I said father I oh, thank yeah. you for the job yes holy father I thank you very much for that job I thank you for the promotion I am even in a new office a spacious office, office with air conditioners hey but there is that supervisor the new supervisor he does not look at me well. I wonder what will be what he will be doing tomorrow. Hey, what was I saying? I thank you for the air-conditioned office. Father God, I worship you. 
With this job, with this promotion, I have even moved to a new house. Did I close the tap this morning? There was no water in the house. I remember opening it. But did I close it? My house will be drowned. My laptop. The worship time comes to an end. We say amen. The woman of God is on the stage. Do you see how we are distracted? We have to conquer the mind. We have to conquer it. And focus. That is what is, it is meant by truth. Sometimes I can be a spirit-filled Christian. I worship God in the spirit. I worship him in tongues. I worship him saying fire. Fire, fire, fire. Fire, fire is the, is the prayer of the spirit as well. We can pray in the spirit in tongues. Or we can also say fire. It is a spirit prayer. Because you do not even see what the fire is doing. It is happening in the spirit. So it is a spirit prayer. But even when we are already there, we are easily distracted. Children of God, we need to overcome this one and worship God in spirit and in truth. Then we will see what we are looking for. Sometimes we have got so many problems or we are well contented but still we are distracted. When Paul and Silas were praying in that cell, I mean in prison, they were worshipping God in truth and in spirit. An unexpected miracle occurred. You will remember that the ministry of Paul involved a lot of traveling. Now once when he was in Philippi, a Roman colony, he was arrested together with Silas. What was it that he did? He had prayed and casted out an evil spirit which a servant girl was using to prophesy with. Now when the owners of the slave girl saw that their hope of making money is gone, they accused him. He was arrested, beaten, and thrown in prison. While he was in prison, the Bible indicates that the apostle continued to sing hymns and he prayed in the midst of the pains. If you can check in the Old Testament or even in the New Testament, the people in biblical times were good in beating. When we say he was beaten, we are not referring to just one slap. They will beat you and stone you. But the apostle was in prison and end up locking you in prison. They call it a dungeon. Let's go to the book of Acts and see what Paul did. Acts 16, verse number 23 to 26. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken, 
At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. Paul was not just put in prison. He was placed in the inner cell. And it was impossible for him to go out. And his feet were fastened on the stock. It was not easy for him to move. Now the Bible declares that at midnight while he and Silas were praying and singing hymns and the other prisoners were just watching and listening. It means that they too, Paul and Silas, were in unity. It is good that the other prisoners did not join because they were going to disturb this unity. Unity is needed. It is good that they just sat down and watched. And the two that were united continued to worship. And all at once, all the prison's door flew open. Everyone's chain came loose. God did not instruct the jailer to take his keys and go and open the doors. During the time of worship, the power of God descended and opened those doors and the chains fell loose. There is power in worship. Children of God, there is power in worship. Whether an individual worship or a group worship, there is power. As long as it is done in truth and in spirit. If it is not done that way, it is what Jesus has just said. We will just say it with our mouth and we will not witness the power of God in what we are saying. Most of us at this time, we have already overcome what I gave as an example. The lack of time, the laziness, and lack of the knowledge of the scriptures. We have overcome this. But the mind is a problem. It is a problem. If a microphone can go around here and we are asked one by one and we speak the truth, during the two hours of praise and worship from nine to about when I ascended the stage, where you here, or you were here physically, and the mind was somewhere else. In all honesty, I mean, if there is honesty, we will not do it. We do not want to tempt people do not want to bring temptations. Because what if I'm asked and I'm the pastor, can I say in the microphone, I wondered to my work, please. I wondered to an unfinished dish that I prepared this morning. Very few can be found not guilty in this area. Very few can say from nine o'clock or from the time I arrived here up to the time of the word. I was never distracted by anything. I concentrated. That is the reason I said we need to, to work with our minds. It may take time, but as we are training, we need to train. Certain things need to be trained. Yes, we will pray and ask for grace, but there are certain things that need us. 
And so we are praying and worshiping. If what I gave as an example occurs to you, I did it deliberately. Remember this day. I could have just explained and you would have heard it. But I decided to do it to illustrate it so that it can be remembered. Remember this day when the mind starts to think of something else, call it back. Say my mind back to prayer. We should pray and ask for the grace of God even before we start with the worship in our own homes. Even when it comes to the reading of the word of God, we need to pray before we start to read. If I can tell you the truth, I'm not saying this one and this one, I do not know. A person can sit down and read and finish a chapter. If you ask, what were you reading? He will not tell you. But he read every word. It is because the eyes were here. But the mind was somewhere else. Before we read the word, we need to make a prayer, a short prayer, and dedicate that time of the reading of the word. When Israel had finally or were just about to reach the promised land. After they wandered in the desert for 40 years, they crossed the Jordan. And I believe they were happy saying we have finally reached the promised land. Our place of rest where milk and honey will just flow. They crossed the Jordan but after crossing there was the wall of Jericho. And if you remember these people spent 40 years in the desert, they did not get time to prepare for war. They did not get time to train for war. You cannot just go and fight without physical training. I'm referring to the physical war. We need to exercise and be strong. That did not happen with the Israelites. They were in the desert all the 40 years. Now, they've arrived. But there is the wall. And they need to conquer. The nation they were supposed to fight with had been training all along. It was a strong nation with a wall surrounding the city. Now God had opened the Jordan River for them. And he needed them to do something so that he can overcome this wall for them. God knew it very well that my children were wandering around the desert for 40 years. They do not have the power to can break that wall. As God, he must do something for them. What he wanted, all that he wanted was worship. True worship. The Israelites, as we read from the word of God, they did as they were commanded. They circled that wall of Jericho just as they were told with the trumpets worshipping God with the trumpets and everything that they were told to do. 
as the shout of the children of God went to heaven. It is not mentioned as to what they said when they were shouting. But it was a shout of worship. As they shout and worship God with trumpets, the musical instruments they were using, the power of God descended and demolished that wall. And they entered Jericho. Let us look at it, Joshua 6, 20. When the trumpet sounded, the army shouted, and at the sound of the trumpet, when the men gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. So everyone charged straight in, and they took the city. What made the wall to collapse? Nobody came with a dynamite. The power of God descended. Because of what? Because of worship. Worship has power. There is power in worship. Whatever situation you are facing, children of God, there is power in worship. Worship can demolish that situation. The power of God can descend and demolish that situation. Let us go to our last scripture. Second Chronicles. Chapter 16. Verse 14. Second Chronicles. Let us read 19. Verse number 4. Jehoshaphat lived in Jerusalem and he went out again among the people from Beersheba to the hill country of Ephraim and turned them back to the Lord the God of their ancestors. Now this is King Jehoshaphat who was ruling in Jerusalem. The Bible indicates that he went around the country turning the hearts of the people back to the Lord. What an excellent job the king did. He turned the people's lives to God. And wherever he went, he left other people to make follow-up. By follow-up, I mean to keep the people in God. After all the good things that he did, look at what happened. Let us read chapter 20, 1 to 4. After this, the Moabites and Ammonites with some of the Munites came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. Some people came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the Dead Sea. It is already in Hazazon, Tamar. That is Engedi. Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Also 13. All the men of Judah, with their wives and children and little ones, stood there before the Lord. Now, after the good things that Jehoshaphat did, a group of nations combined forces and came to attack him. Remember, Judah was a small nation. Two tribes out of the entire nation of Israel now an army of many nations are combining forces to fight with him Jehoshaphat saw that he, he will never win this war he decided to go to God he proclaimed a fast 
and announced it in Judah. Every person came to Judah. Beza kwa Juda. To Jerusalem. E Jerusalem. Verse number 4 and 13. Verse lesson and the show is talking about people coming from all corners of Judah. Not coming to fight. But coming to be united with the king. In solving the challenge which is ahead of them. Because in verse 13. It says also the wives and the children and the little ones. These do not go to war. But at least they can help in worshipping God. What I'm bringing is that verse 4 and 13 is they are displaying unity. Unity. As we seek God, as we seek the face of God, for him to answer us, we need to come together in unity. Then we begin our worship. The worship that is in truth and in spirit. Verse number 5 to 8, we will not read it. You can read it in your own private times. It is showing the people starting to worship. From verse 5 to 8, the king was worshipping. Let us just read 21. 21 also is displaying worship. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness, of his splendor of his holiness, as they went out at the head of the army, saying, Give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. Now this is the worship they were giving. The king consulted with the people and appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him. And this team of worshippers, they went ahead. They were in front, they were in the front line. Those with uh, weapons, they were behind them. What kind of an arrangement is this? How can you put people to sing in the front line? How do you expect to win? Those who are trained for war, they are occupying the second row or whatever row it was. This is another kind of arrangement. We have never seen it of the people who are going to face another army. It is because they knew that the worship that will be done by the priests who were in the front row is enough to overcome for them. The army knew that they were not going to fight any physical war. The power of God will descend and overcome for them. Let us finish by 22 and 23, the verses that are showing what the power of God did. As they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who were invading Judah, and they were defeated. The Ammonites and Moabites rose up against the men from Mount Seir to destroy and annihilate them. After they had finished slaughtering the men of, from Seir, they helped to destroy one another. Now verse 22 and 23. I'm a verse 22 and 23. They are displaying the power of God. Which descended through worship. Not just any other ordinary worship. True worship. Worshiping God in spirit and in truth. With all their hearts and souls.